Okay, welcome to the Keynesian Aggregate Expenditures Model Algebra Equation number two. What we're going to do is take each one of these components one at a time and kind of transform them and explain what's going on in this equation. Let's start with this side here, GDP. What we do is we transform it by making a capital Y like that. It's called income. So we've changed GDP, gross domestic product, that concept about things getting made over one period of year to income. Why can we do that? Why can we make that transformation? We can do that because what gets produced in a country is, let's say, a car. I'll draw a quick car here. Can be sold to somebody. We can count the value of the sale, the expenditure like that, say $10,000, as part of GDP. That makes sense. We produce it. It's worth $10,000. Or you can count the $10,000 as an income because when you sell it, somebody is getting the $10,000, whoever sold the car. So these two things, these numbers are going to be the same. So we have a national income here of Y equals this stuff over here. So we're going to change GDP, gross domestic product, into national income. Gross domestic product, national product into national income. Check out your textbook about GDP and you'll see a similar e equivalency there in terms of expenditures and income approach. Anyway, on we go. Now we move on to C, which is these consumers. What about them? What do they do? They certainly spend money, but do they spend all of their money? Not really. They only spend a fraction of their money. Let's take a little b here and make that a fraction. That means it's going to be a half or a quarter or 0.3 or whatever. That number is greater than zero but less than one. So whatever this B is, it's going to be a fraction, and they're going to spend some of their income. Now we can bring this Y in here again because people get income. They spend a fraction of their income, and that is part of their GDP. That's what they spend. That's how much consumers kind of contribute to the expenditures part of GDP. So they spend part, but also we're going to add in the front here something else. We'll add it as a A. That A is something else. That's something else about consumers. This is the equation that represents consumers and what they do in the economy. They spend some of their money, a fraction of it. It's actually something like 0.9, not 0.3. They spend almost all their money. The rest is saved. And then there's this other thing here. This is all the stuff that they do. They spend this money that's irrelevant or doesn't tie to income. It's like... If you're really wealthy and you have a lot of wealth, you could spend money or you could borrow money. This is all the reasons why you'd spend money that aren't attached to your income. So consumers spend money based on their income and they also make some other expenditures not based on their income. So we have this part that's exogenous to income. This part that's different or uh, is not based on income and this part that is based on income. So you have these two sections of things that consumers are described as spending, if that makes sense. Plus, we now have the business component, I, investment. Now, this is not like stocks or bonds or things like that. When business people spend money and we put a big I there, what that is is something more like a particular machine, here I'll draw a computer here, that they're going to use to uh, create their business. If somebody's going to be a software engineer, they have to buy a computer. That is a business investment. If a company buys a new machine here, I'll make it a, a fan belt with a smokestack, etc. This is going to be a means to production, a capital investment. That's what we mean by I. So when a business spends money on this equipment, on these physical things, perhaps even on accounting service, whatever that business is spending money on to be productive is counting as investment, not stocks or bond. And that is not part of the income equation. We don't have to tell anything about it. That's just kind of described as an expenditure capital I. That's autonomous. This is outside the income. They can just do what they want. They have a particular opinion about the economy. They plan for a certain amount of investment. As a matter of fact, some people in your textbook might put a little P there. This is planned investment. And then the government spends money as well. This is autonomous spending. This is just a bunch of people up here in the government decide what they need to do to get government done and they spend their money and that is a dollar amount autonomous. These are all planned expenditures. 
This is what they plan to do. The aggregate expenditures model is about planned expenditures. Consumers plan to spend a portion of their income, and then there's this little a here, an autonomous part not attached to income that they spend as well. Business people, they just decide, they plan on what they need to, to make the stuff they need and to run their business appropriately, how much inventory they're going to have, how many computers they're going to buy, what machines they need, what buildings they might invest in this year. Those are all investments, business investment, planned investments. Those are autonomous. They stand over here by themselves, just capital I. And then we have this big G here. The government decides what it's going to spend money on, and we've got a G. And that's our equation. That's the one we're going to work with. Now, the Keynesian approach to this means that these people over here are making their decisions not just because of, say, the interest rate to borrow money to buy a computer. They make these decisions based on what they expect to happen in the future. Same with consumers. There's a psychology going on with these equations over here when we talk about Keynes. These people have a planned expenditure and it might change if, if different things happen in the economy. There's a psychology going on. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, that's number two. It gives us a little bit more complex equation. It tells us more about consumers, more about business people, more about the government. And now we've got this kind of thing. And don't forget, GDP is the same as national income. And there's going to be the next step in our particular um, discussion of what we do with this equation next. See you then.